worshiping Jesus with all the saints and angels gathered around the throne right now. It talks about that in Revelation 5. It blows my mind. We get to join in with that. You get the opportunity to join in with that today. As we think about where we've been, where we are, a psalm came to my heart, came to my mind that I wanted to share with you today. It's Psalm 91. I'll read just a piece of that. says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Let that be our response today as we abide in the, the shadow of the Almighty. Let's say to the Lord, you are my refuge, you're my fortress, you are my God, I trust in you. worthy of our trust. He's worthy of our worship today. Who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand? Who has marked off the heavens With the breath of his hand Who has weighed all the mountains And balanced the hills Who can fathom all knowledge And make the sun stand still Trust 
the Lord Lift up your heart With open arms Receive His love Oh, trust the Lord oh. Who's the kind, gentle shepherd Carries the lambs Who comes to redeem With the strength of His hand Do you know Have you heard Welcome to Highlands Online. So glad that you are with us today, whether you're watching online or on TV. We are just so glad that you decided to join us today. We are in week two of At The Movies. Pastor Steve Robinson, who's our Bristol community pastor, is going to be bringing the message today and is going to be good. The movie is Cast Away. Hopefully, if you watched last week, Alex Wilson was here uh, hosting with me and there was a, a Wilson there. He will he will make his way uh, to, the, to the stage here in just a minute. But we're so excited about this message. It is a great message. Um, Steve shared some of it with me earlier this week, and I cannot wait for you to hear it. Um, it's going to be one that we all can connect with as we walk through the movie Castaway and how that relates to our life and really the last few years of our life that maybe we all feel like we've been stuck 
on an island, right? Um, it's gonna be really good. We're so glad that you're with us. Hey, before we jump into the message, I just wanna say, if you have not downloaded our brand new app, you should grab your device, grab your tablet or grab your phone or uh, you know whatever, Android, iPhone, it doesn't matter. You can download our new Highlands Fellowship app. If you've had our app in the past, uh, you need to update it, okay? We, we switched to a brand new app that our team built and it is truly incredible. And I would just love to invite you to take right now, just do this right before the message and go to the App Store, go to the Google Play Store, download the Highlands Fellowship app. Uh, it's a great place for you to get all the information you need. Plus, you can uh, see our brand new notes. So we used to, if you were part of Highlands like a long time ago, we had fill-in notes, which were super cool. We haven't had those in a while. But now with our new app, there are fill-in notes and it's gonna be a great way for you to keep track of all that. So that's an incentive to download that. You can also always find all that information on the hub as well, hf.church slash hub. It's a great place for you to participate with us in generosity, right? And find out about what's happening uh, in and around all of our campuses. So without any further ado, let's jump into our message week two about the movies with Pastor Steve. everyone, I want to welcome you to week two of our At The Movies series. And isn't that an awesome opener? I love that. I love being in our uh, At The Movies series when we get to look at movies and relate them to our lives and to be able to see that and be able to pull God's Word into that at the same time. I'm Steve Robinson. I am the community pastor down on our Bristol campus. And gosh, it's so good to be here. It's so good to be able to share with you today. Today, we're going to look at the movie Castaway. And man, I knew this instantly when we was going in this series that this is the movie I wanted to do right then. Now, the journey of putting the whole message together was another thought process. But I knew when I saw this movie many years ago, I was like, man, this movie relates so much to what we've been through in the last few years. And man, if we can unpack that just a little bit, relate that to our lives, and look at some facts about our lives today, and look at some decisions we can make Man, wouldn't that be a change that we can move on in our lives? Because, man, this movie sit there shows all kinds of different perspectives. And if we'll pull up that first, uh, that first little scene. And you'll notice I'm going to use some snapshots instead of going through clips because uh, I talk a lot and we didn't have time for all those clips, mostly. Uh, but so when you see this snapshot, this is the, the American way. It's got a clock on the wall and it has a countdown timer. My life feels like it all the time. Literally, when I'm sitting here preparing for a message and, and going to deliver a message to, uh, to you guys, that is on my mind. Hey, I got a window of time. I got a countdown almost that I got to sit there and there's a window that I can get to share with you. Because after that, man, you're going to check out and you're going on to the next day. You're looking about lunch, dinner, supper, something, and you're going to go on. So I want to sit there and step into that. In this movie, you got Tom Hanks standing right there. He's Chuck. And Chuck, in this movie, he's all about the clock. And he says, we live and we die by the clock. And I'm like, you bet we do, don't we? And he's all the time going, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. We got to keep moving, guys. We got to keep going. He works for FedEx. He's all about the time. He's all about the timing of everything and then moving on. And when I sit there and I go, man, aren't we the same way? I mean, that spoke to me instantly. Five minutes into the movies, I'm like, I'm the same way. I'm all the time focused on that clock. We cramp everything in, in a day and a week constantly in our lives trying to move forward in our lives. If everything we get. We go on vacation. We all just probably got back on vacation in the last few weeks. And what we do, we took three weeks and crammed them into one week, and we got to come back to work so we can get some rest, don't we? Because that's what we do. We are the American people, and we try to go with that. He's living his life at some crazy pace, going totally full throttle all the time, FedEx. He goes home after this scene. He goes home into Christmas time, and he's with his family, and he, he's sharing that. And she's like, hey, do we have time to, with his girlfriend Kelly, do we have time to exchange gifts? And he says, well, we're going to have to do it in the car. Because, boy, he's got to head out to work. He's got things to do. And you'll sit there and see in this part, he's sitting there, and he's in the car. And in his hand, he's sitting there holding, which I thought was funny again, 
was a watch. He's looking at a clock again, setting a time. And in that clock, he's got actually Kelly's picture in there. But he's sitting there looking at that. He didn't even have enough time to sit there and celebrate Christmas with his girlfriend. Because he's going into the next mission, the next project he's got going. And he jumps out of the car and he's running to the plane. And he says, hey, I need the keys. I need the keys to the vehicle. So he comes around and gives her the keys. And he says, oh, yeah, here's this little box. It's a little jewelry box. And everybody knows what's in the little jewelry box. They've been dating for a while. It's time to make the next steps. But he's like, hang on to this because I'll be right back. And we'll talk about this at New Year's. We'll talk all about, you know, what are our next plans. And then I can relate that to my own life. Like we all the time we have uh, things to do and we end up the important things. I mean, here he is sitting there trying to sit there and be with his girlfriend to ask her to take that next step in that walk with him. But he's actually prioritized the wrong things in his life. He's too busy in the wrong things of his life. And I do it all the time. I prioritize stuff in front of my family and friends and stuff like that. And I do it. We see this next scene, and there's a massive plane crash. And the plane crash is pretty, pretty graphic when you sit there and go through it and all. But you see this part where he's, uh, the plane has gone down, and he is in a raft. Uh, he's got this, he's in a raft, and he's holding on. And I was thinking, that, man, it is just so crazy. Because you think after this guy just survived the plane crash, he got a hold of this raft, it's popped him back up on the water, he's holding on to the raft, and there's a storm raging on. He's like, daggone it, he survived the plane crash, but will he survive the storm? And I sit there and I think about, man, what was our plane crash? Well, I think all of us can relate back to January 21st, 2020, in the state of Washington, when the first documented COVID case hit. It was almost like a plane crash. And if you sit there and spend any time through any of the things, because a lot of us has had that virus, a lot of us made it through the virus, like we survived the plane crash, but at times I still feel like we're holding on to that raft trying to survive the storm. Like I'm still there. I'm still holding the storm. Like, I mean, I survived. I saw the plane crash, but is the storm going to get me? And I'm still in this moment of that storm still trying to struggle through my life and having issues. Chuck, man, he had some of that. This next thing shows Chuck on the island. And I, and I think this is funny because I think it's maybe kind of like us. I know we're hollering for help. He, he, at the beginning, he takes and he, he carves uh, help into the sand while the tide washes it away. So he's like, well, I need to do something that's going to last a little bit longer. So I'll move some logs out here and put help in the logs. Because I'm not going to be here for long. Yes, a tragedy hit and this all happened. But hey, it's not going to happen for long. They're going to see help. They're going to come get me. And I'm going to be rescued. But all of a sudden, it's four years later, and he's still on the island. Four years later. Whenever I sit there and COVID hit, I really thought it was only going to be a little short while. I think it was two weeks, wasn't it? And we're going to get past the curve? Two weeks. I always wonder, we talked about two weeks getting past the curve. Why in the world did everybody buy nine months of toilet paper? That's just a curious question I wanted to ask. Yeah, why did everybody do all that? Two weeks and we get past the curve. Then all of a sudden, we're two and a half years later, and I still have family just getting over COVID. We're still in this mess, thinking something's going to be short-lived, and it's still hanging around. We're still trying to get past it. And now, oh my goodness, how about monkeypox? Let's just take it up to another level. It's just like Hollywood can even make this stuff up. It's just crazy at times when I sit there and I look at the things that we're going through. We get to this famous scene. The next one, Wilson. Everybody knows Wilson, don't we? Yeah. I think if I was stuck on the island for a while, I'd probably make my buddy Wilson too. Because you got to think about this guy. You talk about dealing with some mental issues in his life. He's dealing with some mental issues, isn't he? Imagine going down in a plane crash. Imagine trying to not to drown in a storm. Imagine being deserted on the island all alone by yourself there. Oh my gosh, he has a right to have some mental issues going on in his life. And he had to have this buddy Wilson to come along to be beside him, to be with him. Man, it talks about in the movie as it goes through, he talks about one point where he was three years in when he lost hope. I was pretty impressed with that. Man, that he actually made it three years without losing hope. And he gets to this point of the mental illness was sitting there affecting him so bad and being alone on that island that he got to a point thinking suicide would be the answer. He was so caught up in life, uh, being connected to that, that clock and control and all that life, just like us, having control in our lives, that his life was totally out of control. He came to the conclusion he's going to die on that island. 
And he said, man, the only thing I can control then is maybe when I die. So if I commit suicide, I at least control that. Isn't this something how fear can jack up our minds so bad and put us out of whack that we would think that's something rational in our head that, man, at least I can control this point when I leave this earth? Man, we can get so messed up into that and think these things. We deal with mental issues all the time, guys. And I say in this season, we've probably dealt with all kinds of them, haven't we? A lot of us are still dealing with those mental issues that we're going through and struggling and having stuff. Man, I tell you, I have my own moments. I've had several of them. I've had some moments and I've had some seasons where it ain't been fun that I've had to process and go through and try to get past. Uh, maybe there's some times you've lost hope also. Uh, maybe you lost some loved ones that's really put you in a different place of struggling and having issues. Man, I know, I know there's some in conversations I've had, they've been driven to that fact, thinking that the world would be better off if they wouldn't even hear. I'm like, gosh, boy, that's a lie. But we've been driven to some of those areas in this season, these last two and a half years. Chuck got to that season where he struggled. And about three years in, this moment kind of happens. He's sitting there and uh, he was in the cave asleep. All of a sudden he hears this clunking noise outside. He comes outside and da -da, and he drags in this two sides of a porta potty. You never thought porta potty would bring you hope. Well, there'd been some concerts I went to, it did. But you never thought it would bring you hope. But Chuck is sitting there. This guy has been a uh, seller before. He, he's, he, he knows how to sell and, and have ships and everything else. And when he saw this porta potty, he had a spark of new life come into him. Hope came back to him because he's sitting there saying, you know what? I could build a raft. I could build a raft and I could actually use that porta potty as a sail. And if I have a sail on that and it has enough wind and enough force, it could actually carry me past the waves that keep on crashing into this island. I could get past that. And maybe, maybe I could get far enough out into a shipping lane where someone could find me. So over the next few months, that's what Chuck does. He builds his raft. He puts this uh, porta potty up as the, as the sail on that. He makes it past the island. He gets into the shipping lane and a container ship finds him. He's rescued. He's rescued. He sits there and he goes back. And gosh, we think, and just like us in our lives when we're sitting there going back, you think his life had changed in four years? You bet it had. It changed a whole lot back at home, especially the things that really mattered changed big time in his life. The woman he loved had gotten married and she had a daughter. She had to move on in her life. And there's this scene right there where they're sitting in the car and he's sitting there looking at her. He had just went by to visit her. He had to talk to her. He just had to have that moment with her. And they have this weak moment where sitting in the car and they have to make a decision. They know all the things that's happened to them. And they're sitting there trying to make this decision of what to do. Because in their, their feelings, their emotion, that what they're going through right then, it's just like, well, could we just run away? Could we just run away? Can we just forget that you're married? Can we forget that you have a daughter? I mean, good gracious, we were robbed. A plane crash. Doesn't a plane crash give us enough excuse? A tragedy in our life gives us enough excuse? Don't we deserve to be happy? Why should that be allowed to rob us of that? And man, I can connect with that. I can connect with certain points of sitting there, gosh, shouldn't I be happy? So many times in our life, we justify so many things based on us wanting to be happy. And we can come up with some skewed stuff and we can get in our place. And man, we think, man, I know God wants me to be happy. I know he does. So shouldn't that justify me to do whatever I want to do to get to that happiness? Doesn't God want that for me? And then I take it to an extreme question in my own life. Shouldn't all creation focus on making me happy? Well, it sounds stupid then, don't it? But that's what we're saying. That's what we're sitting there claiming when we do that. We're trying to think all creation should make happy. And it's not. It sounds foolish. Chuck made a decision, you got to go back home. Because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. It's because it's because you've dealt with loss or pain in your life. It does not justify you causing loss and pain in other lives. We can't harm those around us. So Chuck finally, he finally realized he needed to take a hard look at his life to be able to move on. And how to. Control had been a big factor in his. Fear had been such a thing overwhelming him in his life. And uh, he has this one point when he's talking to his friend, and he says this. He said, I had to stay alive. I had to keep on breathing. Even though logic was telling him, man, he was going to die on that island. But he didn't. 
He didn't lie. He lived. What's your logic saying to you about your life today? How's it challenging you today? Are you still stuck on your island? Through all the stuff that we've been through, all the trauma we've been through, paralyzed by trauma, are you still dealing with that? This last thing that you see up here is Chuck standing at the crossroads. Uh, and he's got to make another decision. And I won't go through all that because I don't want to ruin the movie for you. But aren't we all standing there every single day at the crossroads making decisions? We all have to make decisions. I want to sit there and help you today just by looking at just four little facts and four little decisions to help us move on in life, to help us change that. Two and a year, half years have passed by and our life is not normal. Man, it has changed, hasn't it? It is different. It does not look like it used to. Everywhere I look, every, even the relationship they have, they're different. They're, they've changed. And man, we, we have this feeling of sometimes we're mad, sometimes we're depressed, sometimes we're aggravated, uh, sometimes we're complaining all the time, and we're dealing with all this stuff, trying to process all this stuff. And we're still trying to solve this problem of why isn't it like it used to be? Why isn't it like it used to be? Why can't I just move on in my life? Because we're struggling there. We're having that. I know I'm, I know I'm all right, but daggone it, I'm not the same. I'm different. And I'm still trying to figure those things out. I'm still trying to walk through that. There's a, a quote that I saw from the former uh, Israel Prime Minister Shimon. And hopefully I got his name right. Sorry, Prime Minister, if I messed that up. But he has this quote, and I really, I really enjoyed this quote. I thought it spoke into this. If a problem has no solution, it may not be a problem, but a fact. Not to be solved, but to be coped with over time. Man, that's where we're at. That's where we're at today. How do, how do our decisions we make today help us cope and move past the facts that we've been dealing with over the last two and a half years? Or shoot, some of you, maybe all your lives. I'm sitting there just looking at the trauma of COVID affecting us. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know the trauma you might have raised up in, the hurt, the pain. I don't know a car accident or something, uh, abuse. I don't know. I don't know what you've been through. But what are the decisions we can make today that helps us move past that, to cope with those things, to deal with those facts? Because, man, we, we have to do that. We have to look at the facts of our lives and be able to look at those truths and be honest about it to ourselves to be able to move on. There's four facts I want to look at. The first one is, we've all been affected by trauma. Can we just be real and say that? We all have. We all, in a certain extent, dealt with some kind of mental health stuff. If you didn't deal with the COVID, you've done it somewhere else. We've all had that in our lives. Some's been affected more than others. I think we can be honest about that and be real. I think that's a fact. We all have that. Some of those quirks you have today, where you're a little different, you're a little changed, it's because of what you've been through. Your, your body puts up this natural uh, defense mechanism so you don't get harmed again, so you don't get harmed physically or emotionally or mentally. So that's why you have some of these little quirks that might have been different than what you used to have in your life. Man, we've all been affected by trauma in our lives. So how do you deal? Here's a little small list that helps us know if you've been affected by trauma. And, then I, and I said, man, I, I checked some of these boxes. Have you ever dealt with anxiety in the last little bit? How about depression? Dissociation? Flashbacks? Nightmares? Substance abuse? Hostility? Relational detachment? Withdrawn behavior, even a lower physical health. There's just a few of them. Boy, I can check some of those. I have dealt with some of those in my life. I, I'm still trying to get maybe over some of those in my life that I'm going through. And I can't tell you why certain people are affected more than others. I don't know. I think there's too many variables in each of our lives to really be able to rationalize that and give a great answer. Because I don't know. And, and, but there's one thing I do know is please don't think it's because you don't have enough faith. That's probably one of the things that quirk me sometimes when I hang around Christians. When somebody is struggling with a trauma or some kind of issue they're going through, and man, when that good Christian friend comes beside you, and boy, if you'll just have more faith. Like, are you kidding me? It's not their faith. It's the trauma they have. It's not that. Gosh, yes, we want to grow our faith. Yes, we want to move closer to God. Yes, we want to keep on doing that. But right there in that moment, that's not it. This doesn't have to do with your faith. This has you trying to process trauma in your life to be able to move forward in that. There's a great reminder in Psalms that I like. It's Psalm 61, 1 through 3. Oh God, listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. 
From the ends of the earth, I cry for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety. For you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Man, that's the person got faith. He knows where his rock, he knows where his refuge, he knows where the fortress is, but he's still asking God, help me. He's still asking God to help me. I'm struggling. I know the truth. I know the facts, God, but I'm still struggling there. We all can be there. Not our faith. Our faith's good. But daggone, I can still struggle. I can still sit there and have to call out to God to help me. We've all been affected by trauma. Second fact, it's been a struggle. Hasn't it? It's been a struggle. It can be hard when you look around at others and watch you move on. Man, when I sit there and I look at Lisa, I look at Alex, I look at James, and I'm sitting there going, man, we've all been through this trauma. We've been all through these issues. But why are they moving on and I'm stuck? Why, God? Why me? Why are they processing it better than I am? How are they moving on and I can't get moving on, God? And I keep on replaying these fears over and over in my mind and I can't get past them. I can't, I can't get there. And I sit there and I ask, God, why me? Why me? Why are they doing so good and I'm not? There's a point where the Apostle Paul, and Apostle Paul, he writes most of the New Testament and the Bible. And man, when I can sit there and hear him talk about his struggle a little bit, boy, it helps me. It helps me understand the part. There's a part where he talks about a struggle having a thorn in the flesh. And over in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 8, I like his point when he's sitting and he's talking to God. And he said, three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Not I prayed three times. I begged God. Have you ever prayed and prayed to God but no change? I've been to the point where, man, I've been so overwhelmed at times of my life. I begged him. I didn't pray. I begged, God, where are you at? I need you. I'm struggling. I have my faith, God, but I'm struggling in this moment. Speak to me. Let me hear you. Something. Because I got to a point, overwhelmed by fear or trauma or anything else in my life coming at me. Man, we do that. But I love this part about Paul. How he kept his hope, even though he was never fully healed on this earth. In verses 9 and 10, Paul says this. Each time he said, and this is the Lord talking back to him, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So Paul says, so now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Man, that's when he works the best through our weaknesses. When we struggle, when we get out of the way and allow him to speak. That is why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and the hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, I am strong. I'm still working on that part of celebrating that. I'm still on a journey. I want to have that walk like Paul. I'm just not there yet. I want to be able to do that. Even in our darkest struggles of our lives, guys, there is a light. He is still there. He's still on us to be able to walk through and carry us through. And Paul's not saying in that verse, man, just look at me, suck it up. He's not saying that. He's sitting there saying, man, look at God's grace and power. It's not dependent on how healthy mentally we are or physically we are. Whatever. It's based on him. So when I am weak, when I am a struggle, boy, that is when he, he can come in and he can help us. When I can't walk, he'll carry me. Do that. He'll take me through those moments of my life. That's what I want you to remember. It's been a struggle. It's a fact. Number three, do you know you belong to God? Do you know you belong to him? As a believer, you are in God's family. When you sit there in whatever traumatic event that you've has happened in your life you've been through or whatever one did you will happen to man you belong to god you're a part of his family and it doesn't matter there's certain things traumatic people go through that will cause them shame or guilt or judging themselves and these feelings it doesn't separate you from his family guys you are his you belong to him i don't care what you do my girls i love my girls they can do some bad things some stupid decisions at times Make mistakes. Things can happen. But I love them. I will always love them. I will always be there for them. And every mistake. It doesn't mean I don't agree with their mistakes. I'll probably try to help guide them in a different direction. But man, I still love them. They're still part of me. They're still part of my family. That is what I want to be. That's what I want us to be able to move on. Man, and it will never change that. He loves his children. Look at Romans 8, 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you into his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. 
For the Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are His children, we are His heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of His glo- God's glory. But if we share in His glory, we must also share in His suffering. There will be suffering. There will be struggles. That's life that we have to deal with to move forward. Fourth thing I want you to remember is when you get overwhelmed is fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. I've allowed fear too many hours and too many days in my life replaying that same past failures that I've had and sitting there projecting them into my future. It's a lie. They're just lies. The enemy doesn't want us to understand forgiveness, the receiving and giving of it. He wants us to believe everyone is our enemy, that, man, we can't trust anything, that safety can't be found anywhere we look, that we're always vulnerable, that God is punishing you. He is a liar. Plain and simple, Satan is a liar in our lives. God isn't capable of being evil, guys. He is good. He is righteous. He is just. He is holy in my life. That is God. That is who he is. When you face fear or you face just hatred in our life or injustice, it's not from him. It's from the one who's come to kill, steal, and destroy. He lies. If you look at James 1.13, and remember when you're being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. He tempts every. He never tempts anyone else. He never tempts anyone else, guys. That's not of him. When we realize that we all have faced traumas in our life, when we sit there and we understand that we've all had struggles in this last season, and we understand that we all belong to God and that fear has lied to you, then we can start processing in our minds. Then we can start reprogramming our minds to be able to move on. When stressful situations happen to us, and they will happen to us, Hold on to your faith and trust in God rather than fear. Don't let fear control you from that. Then we can make rational decisions to be able to move on in our lives to something healthier. There's four decisions I want to sit there and talk about today to help us move on. We know the facts. We lay out the facts. What's four decisions we can make? The first one, solidify in your hearts who we are and who God is. Know who he is. We are God's children. He is our Father. He's the ruler of all things. He's bigger than any struggle or any issue that we will ever have or face in this world. No matter what happened or what's going to happen, He is God. He can turn what is intended for evil and bad, man, and He can turn it for good and use it for His glory. That is what we're doing. He can rebuild our brokenness in this. He can even heal your heart. He can heal your heart to be able to sit there and move you on in life and not be stuck or paralyzed or where you're at. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Even when we can't see it, even when that will that he desires is different from ours, because sometimes it's hard. When I look at the good will that I want in my life and when God has a different different good will and I'm going, God, why aren't you going my way? Because he has a God perspective way more than I have. I have to trust that to be able to move on in lives. So be patient with yourself. There isn't a time limit for healing, guys. It takes time. You might do it today, or you might be on a journey. But it takes time to sit there and move on our healing as we move on in life. Continue to pray. Continue to pray about your needs to Him. Renew your minds constantly by being in God's Word. Let it feed your heart. Let it feed your soul to understand, to grasp Him more. Learn how to praise Him and how to give Him glory instead of the enemy. Because every time we're complaining, we give that enemy glory. We really do. His people are to praise. In life, we're usually praising something or we're complaining about something, aren't we? Let his people praise. Man, praise him in life. Second thing I want you to make a decision on today is take ownership of your life. It's time to stop blaming someone, something else in your life, even yourself. Stop blaming. Man, you need to quit running from your problems and looking for someone else to fix them. He is it. It's time to overcome your fear. Make fear your enemy. Make out your priority. If you want an enemy in your life, make fear it. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we do not fight against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So your neighbor is not your enemy. I don't care what their political views are. I don't care if they got a shot or not. I don't care if they wear a mask or not. They are not your enemy. We have one. It's Satan. That is our enemy that we face. Fear is one of those that needs to be dealt with big time. And here's my churchy 
churchy moment if I was going to have one today. Fear, it needs to be recognized. It needs to be repented for. And God, it needs to be casted out of you in the name of Jesus. It needs to be casted out of you. Fear does not have a home here no more. There's not room. My Holy Spirit lives in here. My Savior lives in here. Fear cannot. It cannot control this anymore. Cast it out in his name and move on with your life. Third decision, get on the right path. Man, get on the right path. We need God's word in our hearts as the absolute truth. Man, we need it. That has to be it. That has to be the, the foundation in our lives, that God is truth and fear is a liar. Let that sink into your life and understand and know that. Let it become your foundation. If we allow fear to cause doubt and unbelief, we will be unstable in everything that we do. All of our ways. We'll be unable to heal and move on in our lives. We'll be stuck. James 6, verses 6 through 8 says, But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as the waves of the seas that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Man, find your way. Get on the right path. Follow the truth. Follow God's word. Fourth decision, last decision. Who will you believe? Who will you believe? You get to choose. God loves us so much, he allows us to choose all these things, that free will, that walk in our lives. You get to choose the day whether your thoughts are going to be focused on fear and we get to, you'll project those things into your life or you get to choose God. Those promises that he has, that he's prepared for us in our lives, that we get to seek through him and love him in everything that we do and be a part of, guys. Second Peter says this, Second Peter 1, verses 4 through 8. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may be may participate in his divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities of increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a decision. Decide to sit there and follow God. Know who He is. Decide to own your own life. Decide to sit there and that God's Word is the absolute truth that you can hold on in whatever storm that you're in and whatever you're facing, whatever trauma that you've gone through. Decide who to believe, fear or God. The facts are we've all dealt with stuff. And I have this one little thing I'll sit there and I want to show you here at the end to help kind of remind you of that. Facts. This is a thermometer. And it reads facts in this room. When I sit there and I look at this thing, which I can barely see, uh, it's about 70 degrees in here. It's a fact. We read those things. So it reads, it tells us, it tells us something that's happened. When I start applying God in my life, when I start following Him, when I allow Him to sit there and lead me these things, I don't just understand the facts in my life. But He gives me another tool. This is a thermostat. Probably most of you had one of these in your house. It's an amazing invention. All you got to do is whatever temperature you want in your room, you just kind of adjust it to it. Pretty awesome. See, the facts is it's 70 degrees in here in this room. But when I put God into my life, he does the same thing as this thermostat does. He allows me to choose something different. He allows me to take the facts and to make a decision. I can go in here and go, you know what? I like for this room to be 68 degrees. I get to make that decision. And because of that decision, actions take place that kicks on some circuits and some breakers and it kicks on the outside cooling unit and it will actually cool this room as it runs there. It will change the environment that we're in. When I sit there and I go to God and I keep his word and I keep my focus, I keep my heart and I keep that direction and I keep my eyes on him, he allows me to adjust these things. Even though I know what the facts are, he allows me to make a decision to change my life. The change might not be instantly, just like the heating or the cooling of the room in your house is not instantly. It takes time. Allow him to take the time to work in your life to get you past whatever trauma, whatever issue, whatever struggle you're going through. Allow him to work in your life to do those things. 
today, don't just be a thermometer. Be a thermostat. And every time you walk by that one at the house, remember, he allows you to sit there and change the things that you've gone through over time when you sit there and keep your eyes on him. Would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we just give this, this moment, this day to you. God, as we just recognize everything that we've gone through. Man, it has been real. It has been a, a trauma to a certain extent. We've all dealt with some, some mental stuff going on. It hasn't been easy, Lord. Man, that is the facts. We know those things. But gosh, there is so much truth, Lord, in knowing who you are. Man, give us that decision today in our lives to decide who is God in my life? Who am I? Am I following him in my life? Decide to sit there to own your life, to make those decisions, to help you move forward, to recognize where you've been and, man, where you want to go. Decide that you want to sit there and your life is going to be grounded on his absolute truth, God's word. Let me be in God's word. Let me get up every morning and just put a little bit in me, a little something good to face this world that we're going to have to every day, to face the facts that's out there. And Father, would you give me that, that courage today, Lord, to be able to cast out fear from my life and to follow God. The greatest way we can cast him out is to know Jesus Christ as our Savior. That's it. That is that grounded one. It's hard to follow God if you don't know him. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if fear has been your God in your life, I want to take you down a different road. I want to take you down a different path. I want you to be able to call out him today and to recognize I can't stay where I'm at. I've got to be able to move forward to somewhere else. How do I move forward? How do we grab that thermostat? The first one is we acknowledge that we've had some mistakes, some struggles, some trials, some issues in our life. We're just real. We're just stating the facts. We're just real about that. The second one is where we get to make a decision. We get to make a decision of, you know what? I do believe Jesus died on that cross to cover my sins. I believe he sat there and he took everything that I had that from the past and the future. And he said, I will carry it for you. I will be that substitution for you. That's what my word says. I will do all those things for you. Just believe in me. And the third thing he asked of us is, will you follow me for the rest of my life? I'm not going to harm you. I'm the one that protects you. I'm the one that sits and holds the shield when life is firing so many arrows at you. He is the one that shields so many in front of us. When you make that decision, you are his believer. I believe, Jesus, as you died on the cross for me. I believe, Father, that I made mistakes and issues. And I believe I want to follow you for the rest of my life. That is the decision. Now, over the months and the years, everything else, Lord, allow me to sit there and follow you for the rest of my life. Allow me to learn to grow in my faith. Allow me to grow closer to you. That's the journey. Lord, let us go on that journey together, Lord. Take us all there. Let us be able to lose, let go of our past and move forward to the future that you hope for us. We ask this all in your precious son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Man, what a great message from Pastor Steve. I told you it was gonna be good. What a challenging but encouraging message. I think we've all been there over these last few years feeling like, oh my goodness, what has happened? There is trauma, there is difficulty and struggle in my life. And maybe I wasn't stranded on an island, but uh, you know, I was reminiscing about this recently. I was stuck at home for 21 days back in 2020 because of COVID in our family. It was pretty crazy and I felt like I was needed a, a imaginary friend uh, volleyball to be with me, right? It is hard, but God is faithful in those things. He is greater than our fears. Um, don't give in to fear. Don't give in to those lies and trust Jesus today. Hey, if you made a decision to follow Jesus, we would love to know about that. You can, uh, if you're on the online campus, you can click that button to raise your hand. And if you're watching anywhere else, just go to the hub. It's such a great place for you to find information and to share information with us. That's how we can serve you best if we, uh, you know, know that you are there, right? So come close, connect with us. We would love to to connect with you. Pastor Tim would love to connect with you. Um, hey, I hope you enjoyed this message. I hope you're enjoying At The Movies. Uh, go watch Castaway this week and be encouraged. Uh, and then don't miss next week. Uh, we have another special guest uh, speaker and uh, you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be a great message. And I'm not going to tell you who it is. So you got to show up next week and check it out. Uh, it's going to be good. Thank you so much for being a part of this gathering today. I hope you have an amazing week and we'll see you back here next time.